Spider-Man is one of the most iconic comic book superheroes of all time, or any category for that matter. Unsurprisingly, there have been a plethora of Spider-Man video games for just about any console you can name. I mean, why not? It's an extremely marketable franchise with a plot that fits into the video game mold like a glove. The very first installment was simply titled Spider-Man for the Atari 2600, which is the game I'll be talking about today. You play as Spider-Man, of course, using your web to ascend a building that's rigged with explosives in an effort to defeat the Green Goblin, who is the man responsible for this terrorist threat. There are bad guys all over the place inside the building, peering out windows. If your web crosses paths with them, they'll cut the web and send you falling. You use the joystick to aim the web. You can aim directly up or diagonally to either side, and hold the fire button to shoot it, releasing it at your desired position to catch. You have to connect with the building itself, as apparently the windows are all open. Because if you hit a window, you'll fall, but you can still extend your web as you're falling and get back onto the wall. You're backtracked a bit, but alive. You don't really want to attach your web to the spots between the windows, because they're narrow and not hard to miss. And that can be a problem if you get your web out while swinging parallel to the windows, because while you're falling, you're going to need to get your web in one of the spaces. So you're going to be grasping at straws and hope you get lucky. On your journey upward, you can capture the criminals by swinging into them for bonus points. You can also get bonus points for defusing the bombs by swinging into them as well. Capturing criminals and defusing bombs also gives you more webbing, as you have a limited amount of the stuff, which is indicated by the red bar at the bottom of the screen. If you run out, you're fucked. Once you get to the top, you'll notice the bombs planted by the green goblin. They'll go from black to red and then explode. Swooping across them will defuse them and you'll get some points and more web fluid. But like the criminals, you can't let your web cross paths with it or you'll drop. Same goes for the explosion if you're right up against it at the time. If you're away from the bombs when they explode, then no harm, no foul. Although you won't get any extra points or web. At the very top, the green goblin guards the super bomb, which will activate at random. The manual says that the Green Goblin has a predetermined amount of criminals you can capture or bombs you can defuse before he activates the bomb. I guess in short, he gets pissed. If the Super Bomb blows up, you'll lose a life, but you can defuse it by maneuvering past the Green Goblin and touching the Super Bomb, and you'll move on to the next level or building. The game continues until you lose all your lives. You start with three, and you can earn extra lives every 10,000 points. There aren't any alternate variations, but there are three difficulty settings and a two-player alternating mode. Graphics are pretty good, buildings are plain, but how much more detail could have been put into them? Not a big deal at all. Spider-Man himself and the Green Goblin look about as good as possible by Atari 2600 standards. The bombs are recognizable, and the animations are smooth. Control does take some getting used to. It's pretty awkward moving around at first, but it doesn't take too long. Once you get the hang of it, no pun intended, it won't feel awkward at all. Overall, it's a pretty good game with an original concept. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Does whatever a spider can Spins a web any size Catches feet just like fire